Hi Harsha. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Today we are going to look at YouTube comments. Okay. Let's let move into our YouTube comments. First question is in a flow rule, how we route assignment to operator, and if the operator does not complete it in five minutes, how we move or end flow? Okay. So the question is, op, we are we need to route an assignment to an operator. If the assignment is not being done in five minutes, it has to be automatically ending. Okay, so routing can be done using a default option of routing that is available on assignment shape and we need to choose the option of route to operator and choose the operator ID. So now the case will get routed to the work list of the operator and now in order to make sure that the 5 minutes is going to be calculated, we need to deal with another rule called SLA. So we need to create an SLA and we have to give the goal time of let's say 2 minutes and deadline time of 5 minutes. And pass the deadline time, additionally we can give any number of minutes and at, as the deadline time is 5 minutes, at the deadline time we need to give an escalation, we need to mention one escalation. In the escalation we can call an activity, so in the activity we can call another OOTB activity called PX force case close. So whenever this OOTB activity uh, PX course ca uh, force case close gets executed, it will take the parameter of PYID of the current object that we need to pass there and it will end the work object by resolving it and this is going to be executed this escalation when the task is not been done within the given deadline type and the other way around what we can do is we can even do this way like in the escalation we have an option of call flow we can call another subflow and in the subflow we can have only start and end shape at the end shape we can make that uh, resolved completed status or any other resolution status that's how the work of it gets ended and there are multiple ways we can develop this uh, like we can even call another activity in the activity of escalation we can have a ticket being set the ticket can be called on end shape of the current flow so this is also possible so there are multiple ways we can do this particular uh, requirement being implemented effectively okay we move on to next comment we have a case management rule already existing but now we want to delete it. How we can delete it? Okay. So I think the user might be asking uh, like I he has created a case type rule. Case management in the sense I think he is asking about case type rule. He created it and he wanted to delete it. See creating a case type rule by using wizard. It doesn't mean that it is going to create only case type rule alone. Process commander creates case type rule and some OOTB data transforms and um, system created data transforms flows, flow actions, sections, properties and also it will create one class that is belongs to class group. One case type class will get created and when we go to case types explorer we see the case type shortcut there. Actual case type rule is py default that gets created with the defined stages and steps. So I as far as I remember there is no wizard provided to delete a case type but if it is there that is well and good but we can go to that particular class and all the rules we can manually delete everything even the class and everything we delete and go to case type and select the case type and there is an option remove from the case case type explorer it will get disappeared from there but it is not deleting so we need to manually delete all the rules that gets created that is one approach where we can uh, delete everything related to case type okay asha we move on to third comment how the job scheduler processing is efficient than advanced agent for q processor already we are having kafka for job scheduler what is the main advantage okay so now uh, starting from pega 8 they have job scheduler and queue processors I, of course queue processor has advantages of processing efficiently when we they design it by using kafka and coming to job scheduler in case of job scheduler there are no major changes compared to advanced region but the efficiency of processing when we go for job scheduler is definitely it is good and job scheduler runs on the system runtime context it takes and from there it is going to take the access group. But uh, our advanced agent used to run on the access group that we specify in the agent rule form. And one more thing is the processing wise data we can see in the job scheduler but this type of data monitoring which is getting processed which is failed or successful it is not available in the other one called uh, advanced agent before that is the adv advantage. Okay, we move on to fourth comment. In Pega, how we can achieve the data is frequently changing from USD versus INR. 
so now we need to get the details about usd versus inr actually this is ever changing data that means every one second or every five seconds the value will keep on changing actually pega is not meant for implementing this type of requirements there are some other tools available the third party tools which are faster processing than any other tools in the market like like normal execution of the business transactions and those tools we have to use and integrate it with our systems and they provide the ui to display that we need to integrate in our applications anyhow this is not the need here now we have to suppose if we have to implement this requirement in pega let's give a try of let's look at an approach so because it is ever changing data and system should automatically get this data every time we need to create an advanced agent so let's configure it for every five seconds for example so every five seconds advanced agent will wake up this data of usd versus inr will be supplied by some vendor so we need to make a uh, call to rest connector our agent should be calling rest connector rest connector will make a call to service rest and the response received we have to display in the ui and ui also we need to write hidden html coding which will auto refresh the ui for every two seconds or three seconds or maybe every one second the type of coding we can integrate into our sections that is possible that is very easy yeah and here we need to remember one thing that we should never store this data into tables because storing this type of very frequently changing data will take time which is not going to be effective at all so this is how by creating an agent and connect rest rule and by writing a hidden html code of auto refresh in the ui we can implement this requirement but truly pega is not meant for implementing this type of business requirements thank you for watching this video please subscribe to harsha trainings channel if you have any queries or questions please write it in comment box we'll try to resolve it in next video thank you